from Wana Brands. Welcome to Enhance Your Life. I'm your host, Jonathan Small, and each week I talk to people from all sorts of professions and backgrounds about how cannabis has enhanced their lives and how this healing plant can enrich your life too. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Enhance Your Life podcast. My name is John Small, and I am your host. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a great guest today. David Cooey is joining us, and David is the co-founder and CEO of Jointly, which is a cannabis wellness app that helps you enjoy what they call purposeful cannabis consumption by tracking 15 factors that can impact your results. We're going to talk about those 15 factors and how Jointly can help you have a better cannabis experience. Dave, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm, I'm excited to be here. So real quick, can you give us, you know, I gave, I gave a brief pitch of, of what Jointly does, but I'd love to hear it from your mouth. What, why did you start Jointly? What was the problem that you were hoping to solve with this app? Yeah, it kind of starts with, it, it starts with the idea that, that well, that I love cannabis. And so in the context of the subject of this podcast, it has absolutely made my life better. I'm more relaxed, it relieves stress, I sleep better. The giant container of Advil that I used to keep for pain and inflammation is no longer used. It's it's so it's it's you know its entrance into my life has made my life better. So I'm, that's why I'm happy to be here and why I'm working on jointly. When I first began using cannabis, if I trace back the history of my work experience, basically I've done a bunch of different things. I've worked for a company that manufactured trucks. I uh, worked for a software company during the dot com boom and bust. I worked in operations for a large distributor of industrial supplies. And like the thing that I did at each of those jobs that, that it all had in common was that I, I used data to solve problems. And that's kind of the string that holds them all together. I didn't start using cannabis until later in life. And so when I first started using cannabis, first of all, I, it, it happened in a bag of peach gummies and I had one peach gummy and it was wonderful. I, I felt, I, I never realized what it felt like not to have anxiety until I had tried that gummy, but then mm. I tried two and it gave me more anxiety. And I was like, this, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> a, a lot, lot of people, people were in there. Yeah. Sure. And so I started to research, like, what is, what does science actually know about this? What kind of data are out there about how to consume cannabis and how to manage the situation? This complex plant can be used for many different purposes and many different formulations and thousands of products to choose from and, and different ingestion methods. And it's like, how do I make sense of this to, to cause it to help me solve the problems that I'm trying to solve? or to make my life better in the way that I'm personally trying to make it better. I, I realized there was a, a huge lack of information out there at the time. It's obviously there's getting to, with every passing week and month, there's more and more information out there and that, that can be both a good and a bad thing, I suppose. But uh, there was no good like source data on how it affects you and your body because the science has been prohibited for a century. And so even though people have been using the plant for thousands of years for wellness purposes, science is barely scratching the surface on what it can do and why really, right? So Jointly is basically here to help solve that problem for people. It's here to kind of make cannabis perform better for me and for you and for anybody that wants to use our free app. It's kind of, we're kind of show, trying to show people that they can expect more from their cannabis experience. That by tracking their consumption and identifying the right products and being aware of those 15 factors as we call, call them that can impact your experience that you can, that you can find better results more often, basically. So let's talk about those 15 factors, and we can go through all 15 kind of quickly. But first of all, I'm curious how you came up with these 15 factors that can impact your cannabis experience. Yeah, good question. The, it's, first of all, it could be 15 factors. It might be 16. It might be 14. I'm not, I'm not particularly married to the 15. That's just where we've landed at the moment <laughs> because I, we're, we're, we're right. open to other possibilities. I, I basically found them by reading all the research I could find, talking to experts, talking to doctors, talking to bud tenders, talking to people who knew more about the subject than I did, basically, and and tried to distill it into like, what, what are the things that can impact your experience? What are the things besides the product that you choose and the dose and, and your body? Like, what, what can you do? Like, why is it that one time you, you, you eat the gummy and you feel one way and the next time it's the exact same gummy and you feel a different way? And, how, and what can you do to have a more predictable and reliable and kind of personalized experience? Okay, so I'm going to go through these factors and you just give me kind of like a short uh, sure, summary yeah. of, of what we kind of mean by that. So number one is your goals. 
to make the 15 factors easier for me to think about, because 15 sounds like a lot, right? It sounds complicated and, and it, we don't want it to be complicated, yeah. right? So I break them down into four categories. The first one is your purpose. Um, like you just said, your goal is like, is your goal to relax? Is your goal to sleep better? Is your goal to stimulate your creativity? Are you just trying to unwind and, and play with the kids at night after a long day of work? Like, what's your, are you going out to enjoy a concert? What's the thing about cannabis that you're trying to achieve? It's kind of the wrong word, but that's what we mean by purposeful consumption is like first, it starts first with like, what kind of experience are you after? And then of course, the type of product you're using, meaning the way, whether it's a tincture or yep, yep. flower, right? Is that what you mean there? And so that, that's the second of the four categories. So it's your purpose. It's the product you choose. So we, we, we've got 150,000 people using this app already, which is unbelievable to me. It's, it's great that it's actually helping people. I always hoped it would. But when it comes to product choice, like what we're seeing in our data, sorry, I got a little off track there, is like if you use, an, if, you're, if your goal is to sleep better, you'll rate your experience in using cannabis to sleep better between like 15 and 25% higher or better or more effective if you use an edible, a tincture, or a beverage compared to smoking or vaping. And that's different for every person, but the data certainly suggests there are certain ways, methods, and, and, and product types that are better for certain goals. Like if for people who like to exercise or go hiking or, or cycling or go for a walk while they're using cannabis, there are certain product types that seem to work better for that. And if your goal is to replace drinking, it's better to use the kind of more habity forms of cannabis consumption, like smoking or drinking a beverage compared to a tincture or an edible that doesn't have that kind of ongoing relationship throughout your experience. So, so there's the, the product type of that second one is the, is, is, uh, is a big one, certainly that can affect the kind of experience that people have. And then number three is a specific brand and product and, and the strain. So do you recommend specific brands? We're, we're completely agnostic about the brands. All the, our, the database that kind of lives behind the app is home to every legal and licensed cannabis product that we can find. And, and In every state? In every state, yeah. The, building that was a, a small undertaking because it's, <laughs> it's I, I state specific imagine. and every yeah. state has different rules and different brands and different growers, as you yeah. know. Yeah, huge. But, but yeah, we're agnostic about the brands. Users can request, if they find one that we that's and it happens all the time that's not in there yet we can add it to the database and so they can use jointly to track and optimize their consumption of that product and then the method of consumption we talked about that a bit is number four number five is your dose which i think is interesting so how does it work do you put in what you would like to your dose to be or how how, how is that yeah, ai working it's, uh, or whatever that i i would love to working. someday be able to predict what dose you should take but that's not how it, <laughs> that's not how it works yes. yet. How it works now is as you track your consumption, one of the things you record is your dose, and then you record how well, what, how you rate it. You rate that experience based on that dose and the other fifteen factors, and then you can see, like for me, if 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 I'm trying to stimulate creativity when I go for a hike, maybe twelve milligrams of the right this right gummy is about exactly right for me, and I should take it two hours before I go for the hike or something like that. So it's it's you can. By, by tracking the different doses and experimenting a little bit on yourself, frankly, uh, trying something a little bit lower and, and seeing how that works, trying something a little bit higher and seeing how that works. You can, you know, jointly will keep track of that for you as you use it. And, and then you can see which, which dose is working best for you. So the way it works, just a step back here, the way it works is you start answer, you open up the jointly app and yep. then you start answering a number of questions and then it sort of kind of pulls together a profile of your cannabis consumption habits and kind of then tailors specific recommendations based on what. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's, a, that that's a better description of it than okay. I gave. So that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> that's my layman's term. I just have to put it. Okay. So then, so you're, you talk about the time you wait between doses. Why was that important? The time you wait between doses? Uh, most cannabis users have experienced it. The, the, if you, if you consume cannabis too often, you build up a tolerance to its effects and that can become a good and a bad thing, depending on what your goal is and what you're trying to achieve and your, your own personal way of using cannabis. But, you know, I, I had personally found that if you, if you had a gummy in the morning, my anxiety is solved. I feel focused. I'm a better, I'm better at my work. I'm feeling good. My breakfast even tastes better. Like things are thing like life is good. Things are good. And if you, but if you have another one at lunch, it doesn't have the same effect Then you're probably maybe taking too much of it and, 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 and so on. But if you, if you figure out the, like a healthy way to space it out in between doses, you can both have a better experience and not be consuming as, as much of a substance that we, you know, we're still learning about. Right? Yeah. 
and I'm going to combine seven and eight together, but the, another factor to look at is how hydrated you are and how full you are. So did you find in doing your research that that was important towards your, like how much water you're drinking and how much food is in your stomach? Those are factors that we kind of included as a hypothesis, basically. It's, it seems like those should impact your experience, but we we're anxious to see what kind of came out in the data. And and they do matter a lot, the, your hydration and how stomach, what's in your stomach and the quality of your diet, they actually matter a lot to the experience people are having. Like if you, to use that example again, if you're using an edible for sleep, if you take it on an empty stomach, you're almost twice as likely to report paranoia than if you take it on a full stomach. And if you take mm. it on, a, if, if you're well hydrated, yeah. basically if you're well hydrated across all of our goals, no matter whether it's relax and have fun, energize and uplift, whatever your goal is, if you're well hydrated, you're going to like your cannabis experience like 15 to 20% better. Like it's that impactful. That's the kind of thing that we're hoping people can discover for themselves as they, as they learn the app, because it's also different for everybody and it's different depending on what your goal is. And it's different on your, your own unique body. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like about this is that people are different and the cannabis experience is very personal and there's really definitely not one size fits all. So the sort of closer you can get, and if this helps you get to where, you know, to where you need to be, that's great. You, you mentioned number nine is you mentioned exercise and, and the app asked whether you exercise before, during or after cannabis. Now, how does that matter? And let's just say somebody says, well, I exercise before I take cannabis. You know, is the app then going to like find strains and products that might be good for the kind of person that takes cannabis before they exercise? Yeah, like I'm, no, I'm just trying to curious like how that all works. What you just described, it it does jointly doesn't do that yet, but it's going. It, I want it to. Um, so wh what it does do now is it lets people mm -hmm. track how the presence or absence of exercise in their day affects their cannabis consumption and their a, a, attainment of their wellness kind of goals and experiences thereafter. So if you've exercised and then take cannabis, if your goal is to relax and sleep well, you should be exercising anyways, and you should be eating a healthy diet and all, all those sorts of things that kind of contribute to being relaxed and sleeping well and 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 not feeling stressed or anxious. The, the app kind of is about how those things are combined with your cannabis experience to provide the ideal kind of personalized uh, solution for you. And then you can track the, 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 type, the type of exercise too. And this gets pretty granular that you know, only certain users are really into this kind of stuff, but, but some are. Are you having better experiences if you're walking outside in nature, if you're hiking, if you're doing yoga, strength training? So you can kind of play around with those factors to find kind of what what works best for you. And then sleep is number 10. How much sleep did you get last night? You know, I would say like probably 90% of the people who use this <laughs> app are saying, going to say not enough. Um, <laughs> Me and too. that's completely <laughs> anecdotal, but just based on my research on sleep and the fact that I did not get enough sleep last night, even though I <laughs> tried to go to bed at a reasonable hour. So what is, what, what can that teach you? The, your sort of response to that uh, is in terms of your relationship to cannabis. Sleep is an interesting one because it's both a, a goal that people have for using cannabis and it's something that impacts their experience no matter what their goal is. So if you've if you've gotten a good night's sleep and your goal is to use cannabis to enjoy a social go out to a concert or hang out with friends, if you slept the night before better, you'll you'll have a better cannabis experience the next day. But then, like you said, cannabis can also be used for mm -hmm. sleep. So is there one product that you use to go out and enjoy a, a time with friend? And then another product that you use to help, which is sleep and keep you asleep at night. And so it's, uh, it's kind of how I think about sleep. It's a little, it's a kind of a unique case where it's both a goal and an yeah. input. Right, right. You also, well, why did you ask the quality of your diet? Number 11 is the 15 factors. What is the quality of your diet? Yeah, that, what do that, you mean by that's that? That's a really hard one to measure, but each person can answer whatever basically it means for themselves because it's just about themselves and what's a good diet for them that day. But it, it, it's another factor that, like hydration that really seems to impact people's experience and the results they get. Because like if you if you report having a great diet, for example, instead of a poor diet, whatever that happens to mean for you, maybe great is you got the chicken sandwich instead of the burger or something like that, right? If you rate your, your diet as great, you'll actually rate the products that you're using higher at effectiveness for every single goal across across the board. The only one it seems to not have an impact on is stimulating creativity, which is weird. I don't understand that. But if for some reason, you can eat however you want and use cannabis for creativity and have, have kind of the same level of results. No, that's interesting. And then the number 12 is whether you ate any companion foods. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, you see all these 
kind of blog posts all the time and articles and stuff on social media about how mango affects your cannabis experience or nuts or fatty foods or just kind of companion foods is kind of an awkward name for it, but it's the best way we can think of to describe it. It's like some people think that drinking tea with their with, with their cannabis improves their experience. And so the, that feature allows allows users to to kind of experiment with that with that for themselves. You know, try try having your tincture with a handful of almonds and 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 track your experience and see, you know compare it to how it works if you don't. Certainly, that's that's definitely a very geeky way to go about that. But uh, <laughs> but it works for some people. Yeah. Then they can they can start to see. You know, there's some tricky things there with correlation and causation and and biases that people might have as they're filling out the reports. But but people seem people seem to find it helpful. Of course, our companion foods might, companion <laughs> foods just might be the munchies they have immediately after, like donuts for me. But I, I'm going to combine 13 and 14 here, but, you know, this is always very important. I know your your environment, your physical surroundings, setting, this is important with cannabis, it's important with psychedelics, and then the people you're with, number 14, I would imagine, you know, you want to consume cannabis in a, a place where you feel safe, where you feel around right. people that you trust. I think everybody's had that experience of maybe eating the pro- the pot brownie <laughs> at a party where they didn't know anybody and all of a sudden they're out of their mind high and everything is wrong about that experience. Yeah, set, going after the same same idea. It's uh, set and setting really impact your experience, like you said, both for psychedelics and for, for cannabis. And it's, it's true among our users too. Like I've seen other surveys that most people consume cannabis inside in their own home. That's just the truth of it. I mean, it was a pandemic. It's... it's what a lot of people were doing, but people rate their experience better if they consume it outside at home or in nature, for example. So if you're inside at home is definitely the place to start where you're comfortable and safe. But once once you start to feel comfortable at home, going on a walk around your neighborhood or going for a hike uh, while using cannabis, a lot of people find that they basically rate their experience better when they do that. And uh, same thing with the people you're with. It's another hard one to measure, you know, how. To, <laughs> You don't want the guy around you going, am I making you feel weird? Are you feeling paranoid? Yeah, you don't want that guy. But, you know, if you're around people who accept what, what you're doing and are supportive, that changes your experience. Then if you're, like you said, if you're at a party with strangers and, and you're wondering if everybody can tell how high you are. right? Yeah. And lastly, the, of the factors, you mentioned your cannab- endocannabinoid system, your unique endocannabinoid system. But people don't really know what, I mean, a lot of people don't even know, and we've done shows on what the endocannabinoid system is. But what do you mean by your unique endocannabinoid system? Obviously, it's different for each person. And how would you be able to measure what your how your endocannabinoid Uh, system is different? I wish we could measure that. That would be really neat. (laughs) Um, Yeah, exactly. Maybe you just put it you put it up to your body. That's a wearable in ten years or something like that, right? No, it's it's that. That's so for a lot of these fifteen factors. There's an answer that's right for most people like how hydration impacts your experience, what the, how the product you choose impacts your experience, how your diet, all those kind of things. But there's no like one answer for everybody because everybody's different. And that's, so that 15th factor is like, that's the idea that to, to really find your own personalized kind of experience the, 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 and, and get the experience you're after, it's, it's each person is on a kind of their own journey of self-discovery. So that's the, the fact that everybody has a different endocannabinoid system means that it's kind of a different answer for everybody in terms of how these 15 factors impact your your results. And and so that's why we hope we've made something useful for people to, to navigate that problem. Yeah. So I think it, it always crystallizes for people how this works by kind of giving a few examples of maybe input that you've gotten from users or even your own experience using Jointly and how it's enhanced somebody's experiences are there some examples um, that you can share yeah i mean we, we've learned so much first of all and we're and, and we're still we're still kind of digesting what we've learned what, what, what we've learned too because pe- people have shared over one hundred and fifty thousand experiences in the last 12 months and that's a it's a it's wow. a pretty rich like set of information we're still trying to figure out how to turn it around and, and like produce information back to our users that helps them with their experience but for, in terms of some mm-hmm. examples like like if you're using cannabis to relax, for example, you should be you should try a beverage. Is kind of what the data say. Beverages are super effective at relaxation, stress relief, those kind of goals, replacing drinking. And but most cannabis consumers haven't even tried a beverage yet because it's kind of it's a new 
Yeah, it's, that's a it's, fairly it's a new, new thing, which is great. Fairly new, and, and so that's the kind of thing that people can can discover as they're as they're using jointly. That and like if your if your goal is to manage pain or ma ma manage soreness or recover, like if you haven't used it topically yet, you should you should check out topicals you know, because those are also rated far, like far better than vape and, and flower for pain. What about anxiety? I mean, speaking, not I might know somebody <laughs> who suffers from anxiety. <laughs> What, what, <laughs> what, what, what is the, what is the data showing you so far? Like you don't want it to come on too fast is what the data seem to suggest. So people who use anxiety, people who smoke for, to ease their anxiety, don't rate things as highly as the kind of more slower acting products like tinctures or a pill or a infused food or something like that. And I don't know why that is, but it, it comes out in the data that people who smoke and vape have less success at using cannabis for anxiety than than people who who use a tincture, and then with anxiety, it's really and 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 a lot of people experience this. I have all the time. It's it's that biphasic effect that the experts talk about, right? Where a small dose can help your anxiety, a large dose can make your anxiety worse. And so that's a really unfair thing that cannabis does to us. And so finding your just the right dose and the right time between doses for for someone working on anxiety seems to be a really helpful uh, helpful path. Do you ever? have any concern about giving bad advice because you know obviously this is kind of automated what about if people kind of try something and they don't like it and they're like but your app said that maybe this would be the good you know like have you had that experience thankfully we haven't heard that objection or complaint from users each person's cannabis journey or whatever however you want to describe it right is is it's it's personalized and it's also fun it's also like something that they enjoy because they're out there on kind of a quest to like manage their own mental health and make their life better and, 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 and relax and, and sleep better. And so they're, you know, I think a lot of our, at least maybe a lot of our users, they see it as this kind of iterative journey where you're learning how to get better at it in pursuit of, of better living basically. So, so look, thankfully they haven't blamed us too much if they, if they, if they try a dose that's too high and it doesn't work for them. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's great. Where do you see the, the, the app, the company in, in a few years, what is your sort of dream for this company and this idea? Good question. We have a, a really nice roadmap of improvements coming to our current app for based on user feedback. That's just going to make it easier to use, clearer. The designs are better, just like, because it's a, it's a bit of a complicated tool right now. And the goal is to make it easy mm -hmm. for people. So we don't want to build a, we don't want to take a complex problem and put a complex tool on top of it. We want to make it easier. And so that, that's, that's a lot of what we have coming. We also, based on what we've learned about how these products work from these experiences that people have shared on our app, we're also talking to uh, dispensary store owners and, and managers and bud tenders about like, how can these things we've learned help you guys do your job better? And that's somewhere in there is, how, is where it becomes a business because the app is free for everybody to use. Yeah. How do you, if you don't mind me asking, because the app is free, how do you, how do you monetize? Yeah, right, right now we're pre-revenue and that's, that's by design. And focused on trying to you know create the best experience we can for our users and consumers and customers and stuff that's kind of um the original and, and then you monetize i think by by people connect with the products that they're that they're after so if you use jointly to identify a product that's that's most likely to, one of the next things you want to know is where well where can i get it and we don't sell any cannabis we're just a, a software app data company but so if we can connect with people that's probably the, the our opportunity to to add some value and hopefully uh, have by creating something useful for stores to use as well. Yeah. So you recommend, but you do recommend products. You just don't tell them how to get it or there's no. Yeah, the, of, well, the product recommendations yeah. in jointly only come from kind of how everybody else is voting on those products. So the a pro product recommendation right. is not from so us. Like, we're, well, like I said, we're agnostic about that, but the, the product recommendations is like, if you do a product search on jointly and it shows you, 10 or 20 products that are good for relaxation in your area. That's based on what other users at the app in your area have experienced. And do you have pretty strict, you know, I think of like the way Amazon, it, some people try to game the system with Amazon and give all these fake reviews, you know, bots giving reviews so that, you know, your, your yeah. product. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely something we have to watch out that. for because we do, we do occasionally find, find somebody who's trying to game the system a little bit. Yeah, like what's this random product that has 10,000 yeah, votes? But there are there are tricks you can use to find those. And just like Yelp, sometimes you see reviews that get put below the line because they're clearly by somebody who worked there or a disgruntled former employee or something like that. 
um, tricks to kind of clean up and remove anything that looks like it might not be real. The nice thing about it, the way, because for every rating you give, you also have to track all 15 factors. And so there's, it, it, it's, it's a lot of work to create fake ratings on the system because you have to, you'd have to make, you'd have to put in those experiences. And so, you know, and then if you have too many experiences in one day, those kind of things, there's, there's a lot right. of ways to catch it. Yeah. Well, this is all really interesting. I'm, I'm excited to try the app. It's called Jointly, uh, and, and and it is not spelled in any kind of weird <laughs> internet-y way. It's just Jointly, J-O-I-N-T-L-Y. It's not like E-E, you know, um, whatever. And if you can find it on any app platform at this point? Yep, it's both uh, App Store, uh, Apple, and Google Play. And Google Play. David, Kui, thank you so much for joining us and sharing all this information with us. Yeah, thank you. That was fun. Enhance Your Life is brought to you by WANA the number one infused product in North America. Wana's entire process is designed to deliver the same great experience time after time. They have spent years fine-tuning their recipes so that their products are delicious, consistent, and potent. For more information, head on over to wanabrands.com. That's wana, W-A-N-A, brands.com.